It's good evening. Good evening. Well, it's great to be here with you tonight, and it's great to get out of the house and to do something. What an amazing year. What an amazing year. In fact, we were talking, if we would have gone purple, we would have had to record this with no audience. And I said, Pastor, what's going to happen if I tell a joke and nobody laughs? And he says, well, you should be used to that. That won't be your problem. <laughs> it's like, really? I couldn't believe it. Do you remember saying that? I do. I thought so. <laughs> So it's great to be here with you tonight. So uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, the entire concert is improvised. And uh, so that means that if I make a mistake or do something <clears throat> silly, first of all, I probably meant to do that just to fool you. And the second of all, it's okay because I'll figure out what's going on and go from there. So just simply sit back and enjoy. It's a lot of fun to do a concert that way. Uh, secondly, there are um, a few songs, a few things I'm going to do tonight that I've never done before. As a musician, it's really easy to get in a rut, and so I'll be doing some things that I've never done before, and that brings us up to the second song. So I'll be using musical cues, so I won't be playing what's written, but I'll, I'll take some hints off that. 
So, as far as um, traditional songs, I've done so many different songs through the years that a few have kind of found themselves really in a happy place in my life. And the Christmas song, the chestnuts roasting in an open fire, has always been one that I just, I love the sound of that. And that's what I'd like to share with you right now. Beethoven was born in 1770, died in 1827, and so he's 57 years old, and, and in his career he had three different basic style periods. The middle style period is when he wrote the most stuff, and it is just amazing what he was able to do. So what I'd like to do, something I've never done before, I'm going to take a piece of a symphony. I'm going to take a piece of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, and I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to play What Child Is This? So I'm, by the time I'm done with this, you will have heard both pieces, but they'll be intermingled all the way through. We'll see how this goes. So this is Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 7, Second Movement, and What Child Is This?
I love Beethoven's music. Just, just amazing. So there was a survey done a few years ago and asked the question, what makes music beautiful? And they asked tons of musicians and nobody had a clue. Because there's a human element that can't be predicted and figured out. But they did a study of, of what people said were the most beautiful melodies they ever heard. And the number one most beautiful melody in the history of music, according to this survey, was O oh Danny Boy that it had 17 of the 20 elements that musicians believed were beautiful. It is absolutely in the top five most beautiful things I've ever heard. And so whenever I can, I, I try to share it, just my love of the song. Um, I am gonna hide a modulation here. So hopefully you don't know that suddenly it changes keys. Oh, but it will. So here's, oh, Danny boy.
with it's been almost a year, the ASP was running just a fabulous fundraiser for their efforts uh, to, to go out on the unfortunately later canceled trip. And so I offered my services to do a recital. Uh, and it was actually uh, have a recital with Doug or yard work. And uh, I think I think they were both split. One wanted me to do yard work and one me to do the concert, so I picked the concert. So the Berkmeyers, thank you so very much. They were the winners of me in the auction, and this is better than yard work. <laughs> Every time. So uh, there have been lots of interesting things going on in the last year, and one is that I have been serving as a medical advocate for a new friend named Herbie, and uh, we have been going to chemo with him every three weeks for almost a year now. And uh, he and I have developed a wonderful friendship. So Herbie, I know that you're out there and you're watching this, and I'm gonna do this song because I promised you. Herbie loves the Charlie Brown Christmas special. <laughs> so I promised that I would do a couple songs from the Charlie Brown Christmas special. And so here it is.
So, on all state funerals in England, there are certain songs that are done. Uh, this tradition of using certain songs for certain occasions is where we get pomp and circumstance for graduations. It is the same tradition. When somebody graduates, you hear da, 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 da. When a new king is, is or queen is uh, crowned, they hear the uh, Zadok, uh, I think it's the war march of the priest from Zadok the priest. And at state funerals, you hear this song, and it is from the same person who did pop and circumstance. It is absolutely it, one of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard. It is called Nimrod from the Enigma Variations. It was originally written for orchestra. And if you just type in Nimrod and orchestra and listen to it, uh, I recently had my father listen to one being played on the organ out in Salt Lake City where the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, the organist there played this. And uh, I don't know if I swayed him towards the beauty of it yet, but I'll continue to try. So here is Nimrod by Edward Elgar. I think I've told the story before that my favorite way to practice was in the dark. Um, just go into a practice room and just play. And what it does is it helps you know where all the keys are. So that's an F, a C, and a D flat, and an F, and a G, and you know where.
where it's, everything is. Uh, and it also allows me to deprive myself from sight so that I'm more likely to listen. Um, and then because of that, I've been uh, enjoying a lot of writing music for videos and pictures and things. So we're going to do one of those things right now. So, so go on and switch slides, Tina. All right. So what I'm going to do is improvise a soundtrack. All I know is that this is the first chord. Everything else will be, I'll just make it up as I go. And what I'm going to try to do is help you relax. This is a COVID-free snowstorm. <laughs> you can just sit there and watch the snow or close your eyes and picture it being a snowstorm. But this is, I was really picturing snow coming out of both windows and a fireplace in the middle. But apparently a fireplace in the middle of the sanctuary, there's a coat or something. So, so here is watching the snow fall while you're in front of a fireplace.
And if you're having problems falling asleep, just give me a call. Put the phone up to the pillow. I'll give you about seven minutes, and then I'll take care of that. So I actually did something I hadn't done before. So I, had, I was playing it, went out into a new chord. I didn't read pedal. So the old chord is slowly disappearing as then this new chord will then come in to view. So I sort of clock confused the chords so it kind of melded together. I think I like that. All right, so uh, earlier I combined um, What Child Is This with Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. So I thought it worked. So I'm going to do another one. So this is Brahms Symphony Number no. 1, and I'm going to combine it with O Come All Ye Faithful. Okay? It's O Come All Ye Faithful uh, under the guise of being Brahms Symphony Number no. 1. I bet Brahms didn't even know he wrote that. piece is um, the most inappropriate ways to play Silent Night. I tried to think of a better way to title it, but really, I think that nails it. So I'm going to take what you've always loved as a beautiful, wonderful piece, and then I'm going to ruin it in slow, methodical steps. Um, so I'm going to do five versions of Silent Night. The first one will be in ragtime. The second one will be under the guise of the original Batman and Robin TV show. Um, I am going to do a 12-bar blues version of it. I will do, in fact, a Texas hoedown version of it. <laughs> and then I'll be doing a version of it as if it is a 19th century French impressionistic piece. Uh, kind of in the style of Debussy. And of course, Debussy is, is very appropriate to do at a Christmas concert because of the song, Debussy, what I see. So I know that it's appropriate to have that at. Don't wait here. So here we go the most inappropriate ways to play Silent Night. <laughs>
but pastor, don't worry about it. At 11.45 on Christmas Eve, what would I possibly do? <laughs> so, I have been, it's been so much fun to get out of the house to do this, to prepare for it. It's just been wonderful. It's been a very difficult year uh, for everybody. And it's nice to be able to just take some time to sit back and, and listen. So for the final song, I'd like to play, I think it's one of my mom's favorites, but every, it's one of our choir's favorites, I know. And that is uh, Oh Holy Night. And uh, so I'd like to end with that.